if you haven't already figured out, the Christian life is a battleground. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, whether you will want to admit it or not, whether you like it or not. And uh, I'm going to give you a few. few let's, let, let's turn to the Bible real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. For the weapons of our, the weapons of our, the weapons of our warfare. We're in a warfare. Whether you want to believe it or not, accept it or not, you're in a warfare. So the weapons of our warfare are what? They're mighty in God. They're not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down the strongholds. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. The weapons of our warfare. We're in a warfare. Don't be so naive to think that for some reason you're more special than anyone else and will not experience a warfare. The enemy not come against you. Let, let, let's look at the word of truth real quick. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 18. This, I com this charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. Wage a good warfare. Uh, God said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the wiles, the tricks of the devil. Amen? Amen. So the Christian life, listen, it is a battleground. It, it, it is a battleground. And, and I want you to understand, don't think you're going to win just because you said in Jesus' name, amen. Come on. Right, right. Come on. You have to understand that we have three enemies. An internal enemy, Romans 7.23. An internal enemy, Romans 7.23. But I see another law in where I in my members warring against the law of my mind, bringing me into captivity to the law of which is in my members. And so, he, so he's saying there's a there's a war going on on the inside of me. So you have the first enemy is the internal enemy, which is the old nature, your old nature, the, the flesh. Your old ways of thinking, your old ways of doing things, your old ways of believing, that is an enemy that will always try to rise up and come back and take its place in your life. Come on. He said it's warring. There, my, there, there, there's a battleground in my mind. And then you have an external enemy, which is the world. Luke 8. Luke 8. Hallelujah. Glory to, God. Glory to God. Luke 8. <laughs> verse 14. Jesus said, Luke 8, 14. Jesus said, uh, Now, though the seed that, the word seed that fell among thorns are those who, when they heard the word, look at the violence here, they go out and are choked. With cares or worries or anxieties, with riches, with the pleasures of life, and they bring no fruit to maturity. So I want you to see that, that the, the, the violence that the world wants to do is choke the word out of you. Yeah. That sounds like a battle to me. That sounds like a warfare to me. And then 2 Timothy, turn me down just a little bit. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures tonight. Just, not, not, don't turn me down too, too much. Just a smidge. You know what? You can leave it there and I can, I can adjust it from here. 2 Timothy chapter 2. When you got to say amen. amen. Now let's look at verse 4. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. 
that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. The Christian life is a battleground, and the enemy will try and use yourself, or he'll begin to use the lust of the eyes, the pleasures of life, to get us distracted and off our assignment from heaven. Come on. Amen? Amen. 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 And then we have the eternal, infernal enemy, which is Satan. I'm going to give you two scriptures on this one as well. Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. Again, verse 12. And once again, every, I could have given you a lot more scriptures using the Old Testament, but I just want to use the New Testament uh, uh, for this section. Luke chapter 8, verse 12. Jesus said, those by the wayside are the ones who, when they hear the word, the devil comes immediately. When does he come? Immediately. And to take away the word out of our hearts, lest we believe and be saved. Lest we believe and be healed. Lest we believe and be delivered. Lest we believe and become prosperous. Lest we believe and become strong. So he says, I have the devil, Jesus said, he comes immediately to steal that word. Come on, come on. Amen. Jesus said this. Yep. And then uh, uh, one more for the ones that say, well, I, I don't really believe all that devil stuff. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. And the dragon was enraged with the woman and he went out to make war with the rest of her offspring, those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. You're in a battle. battle. Wow. You're in a warfare. You have an enemy. Amen. Now, this, this message is not to scare anyone, but empower everyone. Come on, come on. So, so most want to... Uh, actually, you know what, I, I, I don't want to go ahead of myself, so let, let me come back. So once again, uh, churches don't like to talk about Satan. Uh, they want to pretend like uh, he's an easy foe. Uh, but we're going to learn tonight, he knows more than all of us put together. I say he knows more than all of us put together. He knows more than we will ever know about God, about God's plan. I'll prove it to the scripture. Did he make dumb decisions? Absolutely. But he's not a dumb devil. Uh, and so that's why it's important. You, you must stop. Uh, uh, everyone, the church as a whole, must stop playing church. Come on. And be real. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. And so a lot of people don't like to, to, to talk about Satan, uh, but remember that Jesus talked about him, talked about him, talked to him. And then he said, I want you to teach others what I taught you. And no, let me say this, no matter what anyone says about anything, no matter how popular they are, no matter how big their ministry is, it's important to check what is Jesus' attitude towards that. Wow. It's always important to check what's Jesus' attitude towards that. It don't matter the looks you get. What's Jesus' attitude toward that? that he would, God would always tell his prophets, don't worry about the faces they make at you. Wow. What's Jesus' attitude toward that? Amen. Can you turn on the fans, please? And so it's foolish to go into battle it's foolish to know you have an opponent and know absolutely nothing about him. Come on, come on. That's foolish. Especially since he knows everything about you. Come on. Especially since he knows everything about you. 
And so Jesus taught us in these parables because he wants, he wants you and I to know what he's going after. He wants you and I to know what his tricks are. He wants you and I to know what his tools are. And then, and then he turns around and gives us some tools so that we can overcome him. Amen. 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 And so some people ask, uh, uh, well, if God is so good, why did he create Satan? And you know the answer, right? He did it. He didn't create Satan. He created Lucifer. Come on, Pastor. Everything God creates is good. good. He looked at it and he said, it's good. Everything he created is good. But what happened good became bad. As we begin ignoring God's word, ignoring God's desires, yeah. saying, saying that's where Satan has his open doors. Wow. Well, he see he know, and so and so and so. Uh, uh, a lot of times we think we're, we're we're struggling with something, but there's another root inside. So oh, I have a bad time of of, of uh, uh, lashing out at my spouse. No, that that's not the problem. The problem is you have an issue with anger. Wow. So so what Satan found Cain's. Weakness, anger. Yeah. And he used that anger to produce murder. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, when he looks for your weakness, he looks for the weakness. Yeah. See, so he didn't create Satan, he created Lucifer. Yeah. Everything God creates is good. So let's open our Bible. Let's take a look. Let's look at him. We're going to, and this is going to be, it's so important. Uh, if it's in the Word of God, I think it's important. Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. Can you double check to see if Periscope is working good? I, I'm on it right now. Just look right down your phone. Isaiah 14. When you have verse 12, say amen. I heard two amens. I'll wait for some more. Amen. <laughs> Oh, how you have fallen from heaven, O oh, Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nation. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the furthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. Yet you have you shall be brought down to show to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you saying, is this the man who made the earth tremble? Who shook kingdoms? Who made the world as a wilderness, destroyed its cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners. Can somebody give me uh, the NLT translation? Uh, uh, give me just, uh, if you have the Bible, bring it up to me. Or... Verse 17. Verse 17 says, uh, is this the one who destroyed? Uh, it is the king of Demars and had no mercy on his prisoners. One other traveler said, and would not release his captives. He said, so I want, I want to introduce you. I want you to, to know who it was that God created. And who you, thank you, sir. And who uh, uh, he's become and why. Because it's going to be some of them same things he attacks us with. Okay, so right here, write his name down, Lucifer. That's, the, that's God's creation. God did not create Satan. God created Lucifer. Amen? That's who God created. Son of the morning. Now I want you to understand something about Lucifer. He, his name means light bearer. The bearer of light. It's the morning star. It also means light means to know God. Remember when the Bible said you were brought out of darkness 
and into life. You were brought out of not knowing God into now knowing God. You were brought out of not darkness to not know God. Darkness is you don't know. Not that you don't know about him. A lot of people that know about him don't know him. So you were brought out of darkness, out of not knowing God, into light to know God. Okay? And he knew God. His, his name also symbolizes that he was the bearer of the light of God. Have you ever been in a dark room? And then you step outside into the light and what's the first thing that happens to your eyes? You squint because the light was so bright that would be Lucifer. It's like the glory of God. He was the bearer of that light. Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm fixing to explain why it's so important, especially for leadership. You see, because th that's one of his targets is leaders. Anyone in high positions, why? That's where he was. That's his specialty. Okay? Uh, so now let's, let's, so let's, let's look, go to Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28. Glory to God. Glory to God. Ezekiel 28, verse, uh, let's start on verse 11. Now, you're going to, as the way it starts, you're going to be able to recognize he's speaking, God is speaking to the spirit behind uh, this king. Verse 11, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, thus says the Lord God, you were the seal of perfection. One translation said you were the model of perfection. You were the model. If there was anything perfect that God made, you were the poster child. You were the window display. You were the seal of perfection. He's talking about Lucifer. Full of wisdom uh, and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. You were in Eden. Eden right here symbolizes not, not just the garden that God created, but Eden the, 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 uh, uh, denotes the, the manifested presence of God. You were in Eden. You were where God's presence was. I, I don't I want to be open. Yeah. I'm on private. Mm -hmm. well, I wasn't trying to be. He said, be quick about it. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone, watch this, was your covering. Every, that was his, his body was made of every precious stone. Sardius. Topaz, diamond, barrel, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. Y'all ain't never seen that? <laughs> you just seen emerald and you seen gold, but you hadn't seen emerald with gold. Come on. Emerald with gold. That was his that was his body. The workmanship of your Timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. I heard this uh, from Miles Monroe. He said, uh, Mormons teach Jesus and Satan were brothers. They teach that. How dare you put Lucifer and Jesus in the same category? Jesus was not created. My God, y'all. The Bible says he from the from when from, he was with God in the beginning. Before, he was with God in the beginning. When God was, he was. He was not created, he was, just like y'all not talking to me. And so, and Satan was Lucifer was created. Jesus always was. How could oh gee, anyways? Oh, oh, you can't put them in the same category because Lucifer was created, Jesus always was. 
You were, listen, look, watch this. You, you, you were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created. God is talking about Lucifer. He said, you were perfect. In the day that I made you, I created you. You were perfect in your form and you were perfect in your ways. To iniquity was found in you. So before I move on, the day you think you know so much about God that you won't fall, pride, Satan is at work. The day you think you're too good. Come on. Keep saying, come on. Now it's not, now you can't get it back and forth. Huh? You got to turn the, the iPad on and on. Shit just left. So, you were perfect. And so, until iniquity was found in you. Now, I won't let, let's, let, we're going to look at this real quick. We're going to break this down. This section we read, and then we're going to keep going because there's more. Uh, let me uh, let, let me get my phone ready for a couple of verses. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, to Glory to God. Are y'all learning anything yet? Amen. So I want you to understand real quick. Cherub. Write that cherub down. Now this is not one of them fat little baby angels that you see <laughs> flying around with wings. A cherub is a winged angelic being that attends to God. Okay? If you read Genesis, it was a cherub angel that he put at the garden with a fiery sword to not allow them back in the garden. Wow. Amen? Amen? Cherubs were angels that were uh, close to God. There were angels that were close to God. Amen. They were angels that were close to God. Amen. And then, but now I want you to see this. He was anointed. He was anointed as a cherub, what? That covers. He was anointed as a cherub that covers. What does that mean? That word covering, it means a guardian. He was a guardian angel, a defender, a protector. He was a, he was a warrior angel that also uh, 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 flowed in the music ministry. Can I go ahead and say this? Next to Jesus, there was no one closer to God except Lucifer. There was no one closer to God aside from Jesus, Lucifer. As a matter of fact, he was over Michael. Read Jude. The Bible says Jude wouldn't even speak down against him because he had he was once the one that had authority over him, so he wouldn't say nothing negative against. Not today. Right. Now today, people know a couple of scriptures. They speak negative about any one of their pastors, ex-pastors. Whatever. That's satanic. That's a satanic rebellion. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, I don't want to talk. Do y'all need the scripture? Jude. Just look at Jude. It's one chapter. Yeah. You'll see it. But I don't have time to go there. Come on. Look at verse 12. You were the model of perfection, full of wisdom, and exquisite in beauty. Jesus. Full of what? Full of what? Wisdom. Can I tell you something? He didn't lose his wisdom. He didn't lose his wisdom. Let's, keep, let, let's go ahead now and keep reading. You see, you see the cherubs. We see the cherub. These are the, some of the cherubs we see. We see 
uh, the one at the garden, we see Gabriel was a cherub, but he would send messages. Uh, a, Michael was a fighting, a guarding, but he was one that covered. He was a fighting angel, and Lucifer was one, but also were, were operating in, in music. These were angels you did not want to mess with. They would carry a fiery sword. My God. Verse 16. Let's keep reading. Verse 16. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they might gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore, I brought fire from your midst. It devoured you and I turned you to ashes upon the earth and the sight of all who saw you. All who knew you among the people were astonished at you. You have become a horror and shall be no more forever. Verse 17. He said, let's look at this part real quick. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty and you corrupted your wisdom. You corrupted, he didn't lose his wisdom. He corrupted his wisdom. I want you to take note of that. He didn't lose his wisdom. He corrupted his wisdom. See, so you have to understand, it, 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 it's so important that you and I seek God because he, he knows a whole lot more about God than you and I do. And if, we, and, and if we just try and do this uh, 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 every so often or when I feel like it, can I tell you something? He's going to he, he find a way to overcome you. And the moment you think, oh, not me? Okay. Pride. Pride. And I want you to see this once again. Leaders, leaders, please hear, please hear this. He said, you defiled your sanctuary. You polluted. You polluted your what? You, the places that you were over. Sanctuaries. The place that you were over. The consecrated things that he had authority over. The consecrated things that he had authority over. He polluted them. That's where we get demons from. They're, they're, they're the angels, the third of the angels that fell were those third that were under him. In other words, the ones that he had influence over. I don't know if y'all seen it. The ones that he had, the ones that were closest to him, he was able to influence a third of them to go against God. Wow. Michael was one, but Michael said, I ain't going with you. Come on. I'm with God. Come on. I ain't going with you. You coming? I ain't going with you. God didn't put, oh, y'all not talking to me. Oh. Jesus. And see, and so, so, so leadership, you have to understand, especially, see, never think, oh, I know so much, uh, uh, God, he can't get me to fall. Satan knows more than you, and he fell. Right, right, right. Satan knows more than you will ever know, and he fell. Come on. I, I, I want you to see this. Because, because, see, everyone thinks Satan works on the outside of the church. No, his specialty is on the inside. Of the church. He worked. So see, so God, God is either working in you and through you to build his church, or Satan is working in you and through you to destroy the church. No, Jesus said, either you're with me or you're against me. Either you gather or you scatter, but there's no in between. There's no, I'm gonna walk the line in this. No, 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 sweetie. There's no walking the line with this. 
Ananias and Sapphira, they were in the church. Yeah. And what happened? Lied. He said, why did you let Satan deceive you like that? Come on. Peter, Jesus knew the spirit that was. He said, get behind me, Satan, I know who this is. I don't want to talk to him. Uh, Acts chapter 20, let me show you this real quick. Are y'all getting anything tonight? Amen. I gotta show you who he is before I give you the, the tools and everything. Acts chapter 20. Watch this. And I'll look that scripture down. Verse 28. Therefore take heed to yourselves and to the flock among which the Holy Spirit made you overseers to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves, was that enemy, mm -hmm. will come in, not from the outside. What will they do? Come in. What will they do? Amen. What will they do? Amen. What will they do? Amen. Come in among you, not sparing the flock. Not, sp not spare. See, so either God is working. See how much he cares for the flock. He said, I care for the flock so much that my son gave his blood for the flock. And he said, I care for the flock so much. So, so, and, 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 so the, and so this is why the enemy attacks you and me. Because he knows he cannot defeat God. He's already been defeated by God once. He's going to be defeated by God again. But, be, but, but because he cannot defeat God, he goes after the next precious thing. The apple of his eye. And that's you. You and I are the apple of God's eye. What does that mean? That's his most precious possession that he owns is you and me. Somebody give God praise in the house. See, you are the most precious possession of God. The apple of his eye. And so since Satan knows he can't get God, he's coming after you and me. Nothing to be afraid of, but you must be ready. Come on. Jesus always preached, be ready. Yeah. Be ready. Be ready. The word of God says, be watchful for the, for the enemy is like a roaring lion seeking who can I devour. Come on. And don't think that he's just going to devour you and leave you. No, he wants to use you to disrupt many others. Yeah. And that's why he attacks and that's why he focuses so much on leadership. Because he, because just like him, he was able to influence a third of the angels to turn against God. To turn against the truth. Wow. Wow. Jesus. He corrupted his wisdom. He didn't lose it, but he corrupted it. Defiled your sanctuary by the multitude of your iniquities. Wow. Lucifer was the best of God's creations, the model of perfection. No wonder pride came in. He was so in prison. Look what he says right here. Your heart became lifted up because of your youth. You started looking more in the mirror than you did to God. Wow. wow. And then the next thing was his wisdom. He thought he knew so much. He thought he knew so much. Probably thought he knew more than God. Maybe, maybe, you see, pride is satanic rebellion. And it's something that you and I will always have to battle. They say, oh, not me. You're battling right now. Yeah. You're already battling. Yeah. And maybe, maybe it's not your beauty that feeds pride. Maybe your ability. 
Maybe, maybe your education. Maybe uh, how much money you make. Maybe your status. Maybe it's just your attitude. Just a proud attitude. And why, why, but God, why? Because God said, I have to resist the proud. I have, God stands in battle, stands and resist. Yeah, but I read my Bible. Resist. Yeah, but I resist. Come on, come on. See, because I, I taught a message a couple Sundays ago. Hit the enemy. Resist the enemy. He'll flee. God said, you forgot the first one. Submit to God. And then resist the enemy and he'll flee. Some of us have been trying to resist the enemy without submitting to God. No wonder he hasn't fled because we're trying to resist him on our own capacity. We're trying to resist him in our own strength. We're trying to resist him in our own wisdom. We're trying to resist him in our own beauty. We're trying to resist him with our own force. And yet I haven't submitted to the work. I haven't submitted to what God said. But God said, if you'll submit to me, you'll be able to resist the enemy. And guess what? He gonna flee from you. Just like he fled from God. Somebody give God praise. You see, this word, oh, the words that you and I know only work if you'll submit to it. And this is this is that this is the challenge now that you begin to die to pride. Have you ever seen children wrestle? Maybe you've wrestled with your kids sometimes and you found one so proud they won't tap. They'll cry. Their arm looks like it's going to break. <laughs> so proud. And they'll weep. And you know it hurts. And you just got to be like, because they're just so proud. They're tough. Proud, man. Come on. It is. Proud. I can't tap. I can't submit. Mm -hmm. wow. I can't submit. I can't submit. I can't. I know the Bible says submit to my leaders, but I can't submit because don't they know who I am? Right. Don't they know how much money I make? I pride. Come on. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Some, some people think they're so beautiful that, they, that like God's going to give them a free pass. Oh, you're so free. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> some think they're so tough like they're going to beat, beat the devil up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right. See, you have to understand, Lucifer was in the inner circle of God. Especially in, in music ministry, that's even more his specialty. But some, like, sometimes like the, the musician stuff got attitudes like, man, come on. See, they, 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 like, you're targets for the enemy. That's his specialty. That's his realm. Yeah, y'all, y'all that are in music ministry, y'all really need to be in prayer more and really be watch them attitudes. Amen. Leadership, that's so I mean, I'm for real, because those are the ones he targets. He targets music ministry and leadership. Why? That way he can influence the people under him to to to, to bring destruction, chaos, hindrance. I hope y'all are getting this. So before we resist Satan, we must submit to God. The key to submitting to God is you got to humble self. The first enemy, self. Sometimes it's not even the devil. Sometimes it's just you. Sometimes it's just me, the old man, the flesh, the machismo. What would it be for women? Pride, right there. Pride. pride. Uh, the model of pride. Amen. I know we're laughing, but God, God, guys, you're not serious. Is it? If this was important, it wouldn't be in the Bible. Come on, sir. I'd, be, I'd be teaching something else. Come on, 
the key to submit to God is humble self. I'm going to have to humble myself. I'm going to have to do what the word says. I'm going to have to humble myself. You know what, can't tell you? you ain't got to focus on the blessing. You're already blessed. Focus on the attitude of Christ. Focus on the attitude of Christ. For, for, from May 6th to today, God, God has been having me go over Mark, Matthew, Matthew 5, Matthew 5, Matthew 5, Matthew 5 and Luke 6, Matthew 5 and Luke 6, they correspond. Matthew 5 and Luke 6, the Beatitudes of Christ. He said, man, if you'll develop these, blessed are those that, blessed are those that. See, listen, you already blessed, you ain't got to seek the blessing, seek the attitude. And now, and now understand because, because the, the, the natural old flesh, where you have to be converted from a holding a grudge and taking revenge to loving and forgiving. That is not natural. Wow, That's supernatural. And it's going to take you and me getting into the presence of a holy God. It's going to be you and me getting into the presence of a loving God. Getting into the presence of a powerful God. And tell God, I cannot do this alone. I need you to help me. I need you to help me. I need you to help me to bless my enemies. I need you to help me to rejoice when I'm persecuted. I need you to help me to be meek and humble. I need you to help me. I need you to help me. I need you to help me. Submit to God. And what Jesus like, this will activate blessings in your life. You thought you're blessed now. Baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. There are blessings that have not even been activated in your life yet. There are blessings that you have not even seen yet. He said, eye has not seen, ear has not heard everything that God has in store for those that love him, for those that seek him, for those that serve him. My God. You still haven't even seen it yet. Some of us are so focused on just trying to get blessed. You're already blessed. Yeah. Seek the attitude. Seek the attitude of Christ. That is the standard of conduct for every follower of Jesus. That is the, 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 the moral ethics for every follower of Jesus. And Satan said, I can't do it. Come on. I can't do it. He knows the plans for mankind. I heard some people say, oh, don't, don't cry out loud, Satan might hear you. He already knows your whole purpose, man. <laughs> he was there when God thought about you. Come on. And then when he found out angels going to have to serve people, he said, oh, heck no. He said something else. And God said, okay, I'll create that for you. Come on. Wow, come on. Are y'all getting in? Yeah. Are y'all seeing this? You develop, see, and it, it, that's supernatural yeah. to, to be converted or transformed from you were once a person that held grudge, you were once a person that took revenge, and now all of a sudden you're a person that loves and forgives. Come on, Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's supernatural. That ain't natural. You can't, tell you, you can't do that on your own. You can't. And see, here, here's what happens is we try to do it on our own because we're in the Bible, and you find yourself in a worse spot later on down the road. Two weeks later, you're, 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 you, you look more like a heathen than you did when you were a heathen. Your kids are like, me that you go to church? <laughs> Y'all all got it. Right, right, then y'all on it. Wow. Come. Look, look, all, all the guilty ones are uh, putting their head down there. <laughs> Let me give you keys. Real quick. I'm just going to give you four quick keys, and then we'll get ready to close. And we'll pick up. Can we pick up next week? Yeah. <clears throat> the first one is, don't neglect your time with God. <clears throat> don't neglect your time with God. Worshippers, worship. Seek Him. Your, your, your prayer life has got to be more than you going from the bed to the, to the shower. Thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you, Father. Bless me. Thank you, Lord. Forgive me. Jesus taught what a prayer life looks like. Separate yourself. You don't just do it on the drive to work. 
You sacrifice some time early in the morning or maybe years in the afternoon or maybe you stay up a little bit later when everyone goes to sleep. But there is a time where you separate yourself, you and God the Father. Don't neglect your time with God. Number two, write it down, write it down, write it down. I cannot stress enough of having a journal, or in my case, journals. Amen. I get in trouble myself sometimes because I have journals everywhere. I'm like, ah, oh, where did I write that note? I'm not wrote it. But then I find it. <laughs> <laughs> write the vision. Write the vision so that he that reads it may run with it. You got to keep it before you what? What God said. Yes. If you're an investor and, a, and, a, and, a, and another investor, the, bet, the, the number one investor in all the world called you and said, hey, uh, I'm in town and I've got an hour. I'm going to sit with you and I'm going to give you all my secrets. Are you going to show up like this? Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. How are you going to show up? Wow. You're going to have your notepad? Or your notepad? But th this can even be dangerous because you can lose this. Yeah. The notes on there, you can crash, you can go all day and like, ah, I lost my notes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Same thing, it's over. Wow. And I'm about to sit. The Bible says that his name is the word of God. Oh, I'm about to sit with him in prayer. I'm about to sit with him in the word. And I just show up real nonchalant like, you're lucky I'm here. Wow. Come on. No, it's son, yes, with that attitude, you're lucky you woke up this morning. Read the Bible. He said, you know, I could just breathe and you, you'd wither like grass. Come on. And he could say something at any moment. Or, or I'm reading and something stick out to me. And he begins to speak and, and, and I write, write it down. The first two times Jesus told Satan, it is written. There's been times when God gave me a word. He gave me a word to the Bible. And I wrote down in my prayer journal, my, 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 my seeking journal. And I got it. And then all of a sudden the enemy attacked me. And I can come back. I'm like, no. Nope. He tried to attack me with doubt. He tried to attack me with fear. He tried to attack me with something. And I said, no, nope, look. It's written right here. God told me, May 3rd, 2020, God said this. No, nope, it is written. But what if Jesus told us immediately he's going to try to steal that word? Have you ever had a word stolen from you? Come on. Could not remember yep. for the life of you. Oh, what is it? That, it's not his fault. He spoke. Somebody just didn't have enough reverence to write it down. Or maybe we were just arrogant in our own intellect. I remember. Come on, come on. Arrogance, pride. I remember. Say it. God. Yeah. Maybe it's just too lazy to write. Come on. Write it down. Number four, remember, this is who you are. This is who you were created to become. There's more stuff but beyond this, but just right now, I mean, this is who we are. I don't try to fit this. Let me see if I have time for this. Son, what you're doing, that's not even who you are. This is who you are. This is who you were created to be. A God seeker. Jesus said, and even now, the Father is looking for those that worship him in spirit and in truth. He's looking for real worshipers that really care about his word, about what he said, about his purpose, about his plan. He's looking. This is who you were created to be, a God seeker. God is not looking for fans, he's looking for followers. There's plenty of bench warmers. He wants some that are ready to get out on the field. This is, remember, this is who you are. And number four, discipline. You're going to have to discipline yourself because, uh, 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 
Come up here, dear. Here's what God is not going to do. Listen, here's what God is not, not going to do. Okay, come on, okay. Okay. Open your Bible. Okay, here's where you're going to go. Okay, right here. Okay, you got your journal. Okay, now, now, focus. Read. He's not going to do that. Read again. Okay, here, this is what you're going to write. Do you, like, if God don't do it for you, well, I guess God didn't, God didn't wake me up, so I guess he didn't want to speak to me. No, you didn't set the alarm. Oh, you did, and then you pushed. <laughs> See, because a lot of people think, well, like, he's going to do that. Well, God didn't, God didn't, I, I didn't feel led to go to my prayer closet. Yeah, that was the devil. Yeah, yeah you're right. Because you have to want. This has to be who you be. This has to be. See, thank you, sir. Go to 1 Corinthians 9, I'm closing. First Corinthians chapter 9. See, we did this. We have to help every believer, every new believer have a real relationship with God. Yeah, yeah. Because this is how they will overcome the wicked one. By the yeah. blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Because he will try you. Jesus said he will steal from you. If you don't write it, he'll steal it. And, 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 and listen, th th there is a grace. He gave us the grace of diligence. It's in you to be diligent. It's in you to be disciplined so that you can live an overcomer's lifestyle. It's in you. God. It's in you. You just got to rise up, man of God. You got to rise up, woman of God, and begin to be disciplined in your worship of God Almighty. Not this superficial worship, but real worship. Yeah. Amen. Not the, the, not the worship that you just try to squeeze in real quick. But I'm talking real worship. I'm talking real seeking. Because he, you see, he, he, he wants us to be overcomers. He wants us, he sees us as winners. He sees us as champions. He sees us as the head and never the tail. Above only and never beneath. He sees you at the front of the line. He don't see you at the back. He don't see you. How many love Jesus? Amen. How many love Jesus? Amen. How many love God? Amen. How many want to be the victor? Amen. How many want to be defeated? No. <laughs> Nobody wants to be defeated. God don't want you to be defeated. He said, I see you the head, not the tail. I see you above only and never beneath. I see you winning this race. He said, run this race like you're going to win a crown. Let me, uh, let me read this verse. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, verse 24. Do, not, do you not know that those who run in a race, they all run. But one receives the prize. Look what he said. I want you to run in such a way so you can win the prize. Everyone who competes for the prize, they are temperate. Everyone that competes, they are disciplined. They discipline their body. They discipline their time so they can practice because they're going to win that prize. Now, they, don't, they, they do it to obtain a perishable crown. But we're doing this for an imperishable crown. They do it for a, 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 a gold a, a Olympic medal that many pawned away. Come on, come on. They do it for a, a ring at the end of the season that some pawned away. They do it for something perishable. But this that you're doing, he said, you're doing it for an imperishable crown. It's a crown that will never perish. It's a crown that's more valuable than you can ever obtain in your whole in 5,000 lifetimes. Therefore, I run thus, not with uncertainty. I fight 
not as one who's going to fight the air, but I discipline my body and I bring it into subjection, lest when I've preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. God said, I see you as a champ. God said, I see you. I see you running this race. I know the plans I have for you. I to prosper you, not of evil, not to harm you, but to do good by you. So I see you uh, uh, more than a conqueror. I see, but can I tell you something? You can't be a champ practicing once a week. You will never become a champ practicing once a week just when you came to church on Sunday. You cannot become a champ practicing two times a week just you came to church on Sunday and Wednesday. You will never be a champ. He said, you, he said, the ones, you, have you seen the, uh, the, the Olympic people that, that, that compete? They're, 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 they're training for four, they train for four years. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They train for four years. They moved to Colorado Springs and train for four years every day to go compete. Or medal. And for pride to say, I'm the best. He said, they did all that for an imperishable crown. Come on. Now, Pastor Martin, it's so hard to pray. Discipline your body. It's so hard to understand my body. It'll be an easier one to do. There's, there's no more excuses. What are the excuses? It's just that we haven't disciplined our body. Yeah. We put everything before God, but yet we want the victory. Come on. We put everything before God, and yet we want the blessings. We put everything before God, and yet we want the favor. We put everything before God, and yet we want all the peace and all the joy. And if we don't have it, we cry, we whine, we're ready to quit. You cannot be a champ by practicing once a week. It's in you to be diligent. It's in, listen, listen, he would not ask you to do something he didn't put in you. It's in you. You and I have a real enemy. I think we've established that already, haven't we? I think we've established we, we're, we're in a battle. But yet God has given us everything we need to overcome. Amen. But you're not going to overcome just because you say, in Jesus' name. You're not going to overcome just because you go to Faith Christian Fellowship. Come on. You're not going to overcome just because you listen to Joel's team. Come on. You're not going to overcome. Come on. Come on. I say them every day. And? Yeah. What, is, what is that? What, what, how did, what, what? So? Come on. How often are you with the Father? That's what matters. Yeah. Yeah. How often are you hearing from God? That's what matters. Yeah. How often are you spending time in His presence? That's what matters. Yeah. That's what matters. That's what matters. He's looking for those that would seek yes. him. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Jesus didn't say, uh, for, uh, he, the, the Father is looking for those that seek the top ten preachers in the United States. Come on. Come on. Seek him. Amen. Yes, you know, we hear preaching. Praise the Lord. It's good. But how often are you with him? Right. 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 The excuses are a choice that you're just using. Right. That's why you're being so bold. Because we've got to close these doors the enemy has open. We have open for the enemy. Amen. And it starts with pride. Right. Prayerlessness is pride. You're saying, I can do this without God. Because Jesus said, pray or you'll fall. Yeah. Yeah. And if you say, no, I won't fall, but I don't have to pray that much, pray. Pray. <clears throat> you got to anything tonight? Amen. And so we'll begin next week. And I'll leave you with this. The armor of God. Learn what they protect, and you'll learn where Satan attacks. 
learn what they protect, and you find out where Satan attacks. It's the honor of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, I think we've all come to the conclusion we, we don't have a dumb enemy. And if you want to win, and you can't, you just got to seek the Father. Because in prayer, you get the energy to be able to hold up that shield of faith. When it seems like everything is trying to get you to doubt. Wait on the Lord, and you'll run and not fail. You'll walk and not grow weary. See, because God never saw you be able to hold up that shield longer than you ever had before. Why? Because you've been in prayer. You'll be able to hold up that shield of faith. You'll be able to swing that scripture. You'll be able to swing that word of God more than you've ever swung. Why? Because you've been with God. Yeah. And you'll be able to hold up that shield when everything will have told you to doubt. When all the symptoms are telling you God ain't going to do it. When all the attacks are telling you that God ain't going to come through. When it's like everything that's coming against you, things are falling apart. And it seems like what God promised you is not going to happen. That, that, that energy that you get from prayer and the word. And you hold that shield of faith and you quench every fiery dart that sin is throwing and you walk into your victory. Because I can tell you right now, he's not just going to give it to you. He's not just going to let you have it. It's time you start letting him have it. Amen. 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 Had to grow up in our spiritual walk. Yes, we can't be, we, we, and, and that's the, so we're, we're going to be developing uh, 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 growth, I thought, where we have for those that feel like, you know what, they, they're, they're new converts, or they you know what, I, I just want to go to the basics. And then we're going to have some for <clears throat> uh, more seasoned disciples. Because you can't, you can't ever leave the basics. Amen. You can't ever leave the basics. Because let me tell you something. Victory has a price. Yep. Amen. Champions pay the price. Winners pay the price. You want to be a winner? It's going to, it's going to be a price. Mm -hmm. Nowhere does God condone laziness. <clears throat> and you're just going to get it because you're his child. The moment you became his child, the enemy said, ha, I'm coming after that one. Yeah. And God's like, come on, man, let's go. We got this. Let's do this together. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Let's do this together. Let's go. But a lot of times we're trying to do it without God. Yeah. My wife told God the other day, I, we ain't, I ain't trying to do this without you. I need you in everything. I need you in this. I need you in this. The, the next Was it the next day? That, the same day. The same day, everything broke open. It broke yeah. loose, whatever you want to call it. I mean, favor from everywhere. We, I mean, everything. Okay, this, this okay, this thing we believe for, okay, it's happening next week. This thing we believe for, okay, we're about to hit that, that's about to happen. This thing we believe for, that, that's about to happen. Come on. A lot of things we've been doing, we're trying to do it just on our own frame. Yeah. You got to tell God, God, I ain't trying to do this. I, I tell God all the time, shoot, I can't go up there. If you don't go up there with me, if you, I, 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 man, Sundays now, The battles I go through on the morning. Sometimes I don't want to come on Sunday. <laughs> My God, if you do not go with me, I do. Yeah. what kinds of service? I can't preach without you. If you don't anoint me for this service, I don't want to because I, Marcus can't do it. Never get to a point where you think you know too much. You know so much. Get off your high horse. Stay fat. Stay fat. Okay, never stay fat. <laughs> Faithful, available, teachable. Stay fat. Faithful, available, teachable.
Stay fair. Stay faithful. Stay available. Stay teaching. Satan is lifted up because of his beauty and his wisdom. God, he knew so much. I realize now that is that's such a proud statement. Say, I, I outgrew my church. No, you didn't. That's pride. That's pride. Because even though you ain't learning, God will still speak to you. Don't get so caught up in yourself. Hit me. And you fail. <clears throat> Submit to God. Resist the enemy. You'll flee. We've got to stay on point. Especially leaders. Leadership. You've got to understand. Look, leadership. Women comes with the price. Leadership comes with the price. Amen. Yes, sir. Leadership comes with the price. Leadership puts a target on your back bigger than the church member. Nothing to be afraid of, but at least we need to be more watchful. And be seeking more than the average church goer. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We got a job to do. Amen. We got an assignment to fulfill. Glory to God. Are y'all ready to give? Amen. Ushers, you may serve the people. Wow. Seventh is our. Uh, we're going to be May May twenty seventh. We're going to be celebrating all the graduates. So, do, uh, is there a paper for graduates? Just like at the welcome center. Uh, if you're graduating from any kind of school, fill out that paper. We want to just celebrate with you. And then those of you that are going on for uh, college, college. Uh, even, even like technical, you know, any kind of, what's it called? Uh, continual course. education, huh? Post-secondary education. Uh, their FCF has a scholarship fund, and there's some funds in the scholarship fund. And so you can fill out, there is a scholarship form. I even think there's an essay uh, that needs to be turned in. Uh, that needs to be turned in, let me give you the date. That needs to be turned in by uh, May 25th. That needs to be turned in by May 25th to be eligible. And those are for FCF members. Hallelujah. This Friday, ladies, We're going to be Faith Cafe. Faith Cafe. Uh, what are y'all doing? So there's on band, there's a list of items. Band. On 
band app. Oh, there's a band. There's a list of items. Uh, we will start at six. Um, so come in and let's just enjoy ourselves and get prettied up. <laughs> They're not just gonna do makeup. Either. No, we're gonna, we're, you know, we're we're gonna fellowship and we're going to. There's gonna be a word of encouragement, of course. Uh, but just something that we girls like to do, or even if you don't like to put on makeup, because we were like, well, I don't really know how to put on my makeup. This is a great opportunity to learn and just get some fundamentals there about makeup. Or just get better at putting on makeup. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe the next one will have a cooking class. I, I don't know. Maybe something different or, or something. Maybe you know. I want you know. I want to. I want to. I want to learn more about you and what you like and where we all get to. Well, can the guys come eat with y'all cook? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we can take some leftover at home. Maybe, maybe we can take some left, like the leftovers home. Because we're gonna enjoy the makeup tutorial when you come. Yeah. Like who's that? We're gonna go home. We're gonna go home and we hope we hope we get asked out on a date or something. Like no. Nah. And then in the morning, what was that other lady? <laughs> sanctuary also is because you know, kids zone. So they're working on the plan to be able to open kids zone back up. Uh, there will be a capacity on kids zone. So if you're late at that capacity, it's going to be like they are right now. You need a lap. Uh, uh, but they're, they're working on a whole plan to keep everyone safe and uh, enjoy all that good stuff. Amen? All right. Father, we bring our tithes and so I see with faith, with love, and obedience. But we worship you. We thank you, Lord, that what we're giving is only what you've given us, given us the ability to give. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Healing of the Thank you. All right. That's still God. He was the model of perfection. Yeah. Next to Jesus, he had the highest spot with God. Wow. But he got too full of himself. He got too full of himself. He probably thought, God can't do this without me. He did, and he is. Amen. Amen. Everyone give that wanted to give. All right. Uh, tell tell two people tell tell two people uh tell two people what you are the apple of God's eye. tell two people you are the apple of God's eye and you are dismissed. <laughs>